Welcome to the Rory Wood Shop. We're going to continue our series on 6x12 utility trailers or just utility trailers in general. And one of the things we want to talk about is ramps versus ramps gates. So let me get uh, that seemed better, Dave. This is what came with it. Um, Kind of embarrassing. Why don't we build a set of ramps instead and we'll get back to the ramp versus ramp gate video later. Once you've decided on what kind of ramp you're going to build, purchase, your choice, if you're watching the video, you probably want to build some ramps, you've got to find a place to keep them, to store them, to travel with them. Well, we're going to solve that issue by building a set of underslide carriage uh, holders, whatever you want to call them, basically ramp slides as I call them. That way they're stored under the trailer, out of sight out of the way when you're hauling things like lumber and not using the ramps and they're not getting tossed in the back of the trailer the back of the truck in your way forgotten at home so what we need to do first is figure out what is our capacity based on this trailer and where are we going to put the, the slides for the ramps to be stored a common place that they're stored is a lot of people will take and remove this railing and actually make the railing part of the rails that is a system that works but not with this style utility trailer, which is the most common utility trailer. It's angle iron frame. The sidewall acts like a truss. So if you choose to cut some of your framework out, it's just, it is that, it is framework to make a ramp or access, you can load something on sideways. You need to do a lot of reinforcement to the underside. So that unfortunately is not an option. So towards the back of the trailer is an option. But what I've noticed is We've got our rail, rail there, rail there. So one option is we can slide them under here, or we can slide them in this way. And we're actually showing you the driver's side for safety reasons. We're, we're gonna do this off of the passenger side. That way it's in, if you have to park on a curb or on the street, you're not unloading your ramps into the street. Again, my ideal positioning is off the back, but that would make the carry just hang low. You can see that we did that on the back of this uh, fifth wheel car trailer, utility trailer that we built. And we've done that on a couple others, but again, just don't have the clearance. And if you were to catch a driveway or something, you're probably going to lose the ramps and lose the carriage. So we'll do some measuring and we'll decide whether we're going to go in from the front or go in from the back here. I used this one time with the wooden ramps to load an ATV and that five foot seemed like a good length. So we're five foot, but you know what? If we can get six, I build a couple of six foot ramps. Those are kind of nice. But on the other hand, we've got to move these things. So all these are factors in what size ramp we build, storage, weight, and needs. So let's see what we've got. Inside to inside is a little over six foot. So we know that that is our max. So pushing a six foot limit with the a stop bar and catches, six foot may not be the best. I could probably get five and a half, so we're gonna stick with that. Four foot's just a little bit too short for like riding mowers, golf carts, things like that. So the previous owner used a five foot wood ramp. I borrow or use that, because that's all I had access to, to put an ATV on here, so that seems to work. I think that's what we're gonna stick with, but I do like the 12 inch width for the UTV, so we're going to stick with the 12 inch width rather than the 8 inch that he built his wood ones out of. So let's head inside the shop and lay out some ramps. All right, now that we've determined our trailer cross access will give us up to six feet, I typically like to make as long a ramps as we can, but since we're using this lighter weight material, I have two choices. I can, if I want the full six foot, I've got to beef up the material to eight, uh, three sixteenths or go to two by two 
for all the framework. We don't want to spend that kind of money, um, so we're going to stick with the standard five foot ramps. So the first thing we're going to do is get our four side members or side rails. We're going to get those cut and make sure you cut identical in each pair so that way you get a nice size ramp or an equal size ramp. All right, we calculated we're going to do nine cross members on each ramp. Uh, it's going to be 14 of them or seven times two is 14 of just the standard angle iron cross. The last four or two on each one are going to be the approach and the catch on the ramps when it hooks into the trailer and the one that gives it you know, kind of that angle to, without having to ruin dolly tires or one more tires. We're going to wait and cut those until we get the ramps built so that way they can be welded on the outside. But we want to make sure that we do a really accurate job so we're going to set up and I'll cut two at a time and then we're going to use the same one to mark off all the rest so that way our 14 are pretty consistent. With most angle iron you have a 90 degree outside corner but you have a bent or radius internal corner. So one of the things I do is like, probably the reason you're building your own ramps too is to make them a little bit better quality. If you make them the exact length push them against the side they're actually off of the, the lower part of the rail. So what I do is I take and just kind of bevel each little corner that allows the radius to set tight that way it can sit tight on the bottom and sit tight on the outside edge. Alright next comes layout of our cross rails. You want to try to be as accurate and repetitive as you can so that way everything ends up nice tight and square. So what I like to do is lay out one and then transfer it across rather than take the time to measure two because that gives a little more accuracy. So we're going to label this one A1, A2, and we'll label the other ones B1, B2. I'm going to go 8 inches on center, but I'm going to start out at 6 because of the extra 2 inches, and it just works out better that way for our numbers. Alright, so now we'll take number 2 and just transfer them across. Use this this set to copy over to B1 and B2. All right, now that I got these laid out, the next thing I want to do is measure my diagonals. And measuring diagonals is going to help you make sure it's square. Okay. This one happened to be a quarter inch difference diagonally, so I moved that up an eighth of an inch. And that's, in my opinion, more accurate than trying to use a framing square. Not that they don't work, but this is accurate over a longer distance. So make sure everything's still lined up with our marks. And it's time to get the welder out and start tacking. Double check, make sure we're still square. Yep. Time to go back and go to town on this one. All right, so now I got my horizontals welded. I'm gonna go ahead and do the peak. I think this will be strong enough the way it is, but I've got the welder out. It's another two or three, five minutes tops to go ahead and do that, and I think it doubles the strength. Again, you're doing your own ramps for a reason. Put the extra time and effort into them. All right, you've got multiple ways to, uh, to make a catch or a hook, some people call it, and your approach. My typical method is a piece of 2 by 3, uh, 3 sixteenths. I happen to have this inch and a half by two and a half from a pop-up camper that we converted to a flatbed. This is the cross rails that we cut off the side and that's going to work out real well to give me an inch of or an inch and a half here plus an inch gap for the hook to catch. So I'll just make sure it's square. 
and we'll get it tacked on. Make sure we got the same amount of exposure, inch and a quarter. Make sure nothing moved. Good check. All right, we're gonna weld this one down. The whole point of this approach is to make it so that way you have left, you don't have to get up that inch and a half, especially with something like a lawnmower or a golf cart or something of that nature, which doesn't have a lot of initial torque to make that climb. Two wheeled carts, things like that. So what we're gonna do is do it the more traditional way is just take some flat steel, uh, 3 16 or a quarter inch, two inch wide plate, weld it across, and then we'll take and cut a six inch by one and a half inch angle to kind of give it that approach with our angle grinder. My approach when using an angle grinder to cut is to make a light pass along the line and slowly get deeper and deeper rather than cut the full depth trying to follow the line. You'll have better success in my opinion. And one of the things that shows attention to detail and that you are paying attention to safety is getting rid of all the sharp corners. So for example on the hook I'm going to just do a slight cutting wheel angle iron cut. One of the last things I do, make sure you got gloves on, is just check all the cut edges, make sure you got them rounded over, all the corners that might grab something like right there, I missed that spot. All this stuff does is again, attention to detail, charge you paying attention to safety. I think this makes a better quality, personally built ramp. I'm gonna clean that up, but other than that, got a lightweight ramp, a little over five foot long. We'll go ahead and do same process to the other one. Obviously, I'm not going to film that, and then we'll head out to the trailer and actually build the slides that these go into.